here we are in the woodland again. Down there you can see bluebells, uh, which is a member of the hyacinth family. And the perfume as I stand here is absolutely wonderful. The white stuff you can see mixed with it is called stitchwort. And that lovely sort of contrast between the blue and the white. And uh, a lovely place to be. This is probably the leper subject amongst Christians. The leper subject because they won't talk about it. They see it as unclean. They see it as somehow not to do with God. And they run and hide if anyone dares say sex. I'm making this video because I am pretty darn tired of the stupidity and the nonsense that goes on in Christian circles surrounding this subject. There is an obsession with sex as an undercurrent in a negative kind of way which brings people under law which of course exacerbates the problem. You know, and you, you'll know of Brother Paul speaking as an aside in the flow of the book of Romans, uh, Romans in chapter 7, speaking about his pre-Christian life, that when he came under the law, he found that the, the commandment only exacerbated and brought forth the, uh, you know, command, the uh, nature in himself to lust. And... Isn't that true in church circles today? And yet I find that scripture is very, very straightforward about sex and that we ought to do so, as be so as well. If the Holy Spirit of God is quite happy to inspire such words from amongst people, uh, from amongst his people he used to record uh, the scripture, then we should be straightforward too. Elsewhere, you lots way through the New Testament, the Old Testament rather, you find that so and so knew his wife so and so, and she and she produced X Y Z child. And you will find, for instance, that um, in the collapse of um, the uh, state of Israel, the nation of Israel, when it got split into two, and a nice little fly pass by the RAF just for you, that. The Northern Kingdom, the Northern Kingdom of Israel uh, from Samaria, was doing all sorts of appalling evils. You will know that they were up to offering things in the um, uh, under the groves, in the groves, to pagan idols. Uh, they were probably doing human sacrifice. Uh, they were into the gods of Canaan. Uh, they were doing all manner of appalling evil. But it says elsewhere that the women of the northern kingdom saw portrayal of the Assyrians, uh, the princes of Assyria, and that the, uh, it says in scripture there that, uh, that, that they had, their, their paramours were great, was it? And their issue was like donkeys. In other words, they had large genitals and you know produce large volume of semen and the scriptures very very straight about these kinds of things and the and because Christians are running away from this subject they get into all sorts of trouble don't they it's horrendous absolutely horrendous it doesn't mean that what these people of the norm, the women of the northern kingdom of uh, Israel did was right. Of course it wasn't right. They were lusting after men of a foreign nation and they shouldn't have been lusting in the first place. And secondly, certainly not after pagan savages of Assyria. However, they were, and this is sort of some of the things which led up to the northern kingdom being carried off by uh, the king of Assyria never to return never to return. Did God shut off and cut off his people? Yes. He does the same thing in the New Covenant era. 
if you think you're going to do just what you like and be saved ultimately you've lost your head sorry friend however sex is very very clearly spoken about in scripture and it's about time that you and I dealt with this um, and let us who are in the truth receive the truth live and do the truth Jesus is the truth if you won't accept or wish to vary the truth for some reason it shows you are not loyal to the Lord Jesus Christ and if you're not loyal to the Lord Jesus Christ you'll know as well as I do what that results in you will ultimately lose your existence, your state, your standing with Jesus Christ, your standing with God, and you'll be lost in the end. But I wanted to pick up one particular issue here. Something came up when I was doing the dog show the other day, and if you haven't seen the dog show, you can go and look at my website, lucaslabrador.net, and I do Labrador Live, as it's called, or the dog show, as I call it, second for a joke. Labrador live on a Sunday evening 8 p.m. UK time whatever that is wherever you are um, however something came up when we were talking we were talking about marriage we mentioned marriage the royal weddings coming up on Friday this Friday as I'm making this this is the Wednesday before and you know God bless the royal couple and they speak, they seem to be a nice, very nice young couple and I wish them well. You know, God bless them and give them a long and happy marriage. But, sorry about this guys, they're already married. Sex occurs in, sorry, marriage occurs in sex. When you have sex with someone, it's not just a physical union, a spiritual union takes place. This is why you think reading scripture like things like that, should he do so and so and be going joined to a harlot. He didn't mean just hang around with her. If you have sex with her, you're in union with her, you're married. The first person you had sex with, you're married. The next time you had sex with somebody else, you committed adultery before God. Marriage is nothing to do with ceremonies, vows, uh, nothing to do with rings. It is nothing to do uh, with uh, pieces of paper, marriage certificates. Nothing to do with it. That's the inventions of men entirely. Church people tend to take the view that if you don't go and get married in church and you say your vows, and we all, which is all very pretty, isn't it? And the lovely dresses and the smart, you know, suits and over. It's all very nice, you know, and the ceremony and stuff. But they think unless you go and do that, you're not married. And they treat people as cohabitees, you know, um, that they're not married. Sorry, that is not true. You know, you see things in scripture like, and Isaac took Rebekah into his tent. There wasn't any ceremony, really. No vows, no rings, no marriage certificate. Because it was well known then that if you have sex with someone, you marry them put it this way for you even if you've never heard such things mentioned by a Christian ever before let me point to something in your own self that you know from your own experience let's imagine now that you had a close friend a little while ago just a friend some friends and stuff you fell out with them a little while ago and and you haven't seen them for ages and then you sort of you happen to bump in them in, in some sort of social circumstance do you have a problem with that? Doesn't really mean anything to you, does it? You can just ignore them and walk away, can't you? But what if that person was your partner in whoring or fornication? And we've all been there, you understand, I'm not pointing fingers. What if that person was someone you had sex with? And you've been intimate with? Now you haven't seen them for some years, you bump into them in a social setting what do you feel you can still feel that union with them can't you you can still feel that intimacy with them that bond that's there you rather wish you couldn't feel that bond that was there and it may be diminished from what it was but nevertheless it's still there isn't it why 
you're married to that person. And if you've had sex with a number of different others, you're married to them too. That's why sexual crime is so serious before God. Under the law of the Lord God of Israel, if you went whoring uh, or fornicating just once or twice with the same person, compulsory marriage, shotgun wedding, with no divorce allowed ever. But if you went whoring and fornicating with a number of others over time, you'd be stoned to death. No messing. Adultery is a similar, similar idea. You know, and if he does that to those that go around the spiritual crime of whoring and fornicating, what's he do to those that do worse? Also mentioned in scripture. Sex is marriage, okay? The other day I spoke to a private, the owners, one of the owners of the private hotel that's being persecuted in the courts by sodomites, uh, determined that everybody should accept anus lust as righteousness and decency and holiness and equal, equal to, to normal marriage. And she was, the lady was telling me that they only accepted married couples in a um, twin bedded you know, in an environment they wouldn't allow them to stay in the same room if they weren't married, and those kinds of things. Her view of marriage was the church view, and in the church view of marriage, uh, then they have to, you know, they have a marriage certificate and rings and all the rest of it. That's the church view. Of course, she's just a bit ignorant as yet on that particular issue. But the plain fact of the matter is that all these boyfriend girlfriend things that you get everywhere today oh they're not going to bother to get married they're just going to live together sorry if i got news for you you are married you're just as married as the person down the road with the marriage certificate and the rings and the change of the name just as married the only difference is you managed to skip the ceremony the vows and the rings and the piece of paper that's all you're just as married as the next person that's just how it is but why why is sex so serious it's a spiritual crime if it's messed up remember from the creation God made man notice that the initial creation on the sixth day God made formed the man's body from the ground he breathed life into the man. He didn't make a man and a woman and breathe life into them as separate people, separate creatures. He breathed life into the man. Then after the se on the seventh day was a day of rest. After that came the, came the, the naming of the creatures. And God brought all his created creatures before Adam and whatever Adam wished to call that particular creature, that was its name. And after all that process, and we've not told how long this took, we've not told how long it was, the Lord said that there wasn't a suitable partner found, a suitable help found for Adam. The animals were all made male and female, but man wasn't, notice. The woman was part of the man at the creation, of course. But a little bit later, and we're not told how later, the woman didn't exist at that time, remember, as a separate person. A little bit later on, he caused a deep sleep to fall on Adam, major anaesthetic, and he took part of Adam's body, a rib, and from that he made a woman. The woman was a derivative from the man, she was not made from the earth directly. She's a derivative from the man and she's made for the man. Obeyed to be wife, mother and homemaker, helper for her husband and what have you. And when they get, when they get married, they too shall become one flesh. There's the union. And it happens in sex, as I've said. Okay. The two shall become one flesh. The putting back together again 
and the making of man, making man whole again. I think most of us who are married will tell you that that before they they you know they were single and stuff you know they were around the about and they were on their own. But when they got married, they felt somehow completed, somehow fulfilled, somehow um, bigger, if you like. That's pretty common feeling. So sex is a serious issue. Serious issue. Woman was made from the man, for the man, not equal to the man. And there's a, when that sexual union takes place, the spiritual union takes place too. Let me just quote another bit from scripture, which most people would run away from because we won't talk about sex. Sex is naughty. No, it's not. Who designed sex for goodness sake? There's a little part, and I'm reading this just to get it exactly right, because it's not, a, it's not a, 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 a something that I read a lot, but from Proverbs 31. Give not thy strength unto women, nor thy ways to that which destroys kings. What are we talking about? Well, sex. This is about, because when a man inseminates a woman, it isn't just something physical, fluid that's passing from him. Spiritual power, spiritual strength is transferred into the woman. And she gains spiritual strength from him, from that. You, if you give yourself to sex, you will drain yourself spiritually as a man. Something I made was said again the other day to this brother I mentioned in another video. When uh, the 1950s came along, there were a lot of real men around. But in the 1960s, where did the men go? Notice this, where did the men go? And since the 1960s, what happened to the men? Where were the solid, strong, masculine men and everything that the Satan's agents hate? Where did the men go? Think about it. In the 1960s, what did the men do? They lost and or cast aside their masculinity and they grew their hair long, didn't they? And they started to become beardy weirdies. Is that right? Think about it. And masculinity went out the window, didn't it? Why? Where were they? Where was their, their spiritual strength as men going? It's at the same time there was wholesale whoring and fornication going on. Still is, of course. And it's through sex the men are being weakened in society, not through us, the Lord's people, we don't do that. But society is being weakened by uh, sex. Men are giving their strength to women and the result is the women are taking over. You have women in leadership and authority positions. You have women officers in the army and the air force and all sorts. You have women in politics and all that. Where did they get their strength to do that? because men gave their strength away to the women in sex. It's a serious issue. Sex makes you weak, spiritually. It's okay if it's your wife and it's in your house. That's fine, there's nothing wrong with that whatsoever. Normal marital relations, no problem. Whatever. But if you are into excessive sex and sex with lots of others and stuff, you will become spiritually weak. That's what happens. Notice in that from Proverbs 31, nor tell him not to give your strength to women, which is what's being spoken about, uh, and uh, nor to thy ways, which destroys kings. How many societies have collapsed and fallen in debauchery? Think about it. When the men turn, to wine, women and song, it all goes to pieces. Is that correct? 
That's why. They give away their spiritual strength. Their spiritual strength is sapped. Society sinks back. Women take control. Then you get anus lusters taking control. And all sorts of fruit it bears. Think about it. There is nothing wrong with normal marital relations. Our Lord's way is one man, one woman, together for life, chastity before marriage and faithfulness within marriage. For the reasons I've already given. But we pay a high price if we give ourselves to whoring and fornicating. It destroys you spiritually, it weakens you, it wrecks you, and it's sin before God. Now, of course, if you're a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ, you don't get involved in that. But all around us, it's going on. So let's remember this. Sex is marriage. The vows, the rings, the piece of paper for the, for the bureaucrats is nothing to do with it at all. And the reason why our societies around us are in such a mess is precisely because of sexual immorality.